Welcome back to the French Cooking Academy, people. Yes, it's been uh, about a month or a bit more. It hasn't been online, but we are finally resuming recipe. Now, if you've seen my latest video, I said that this beginning of the year, we're going to be covering easy to do recipe that are typical French food um, that people make at home. So if you're new to the channel, it's really a good time to jump in because we're going to be doing a series of very uh, hands-on, easy to make at home recipes. So anyone can really do this recipe. Trust me, they are extremely straightforward. So today, as, uh, as I said before, we're going to be preparing a roast pork. And this is a pork shoulder. Actually, here in Australia, it's called a, a pork scotch. And it's got more uh, fat in there. So it's got a, a bit of a marble in the meat. And we're going to cook that lovely piece of meat in milk. And I'm going to add a little bit of cream because I like cream. But away from that simple flavors, and we're going to have some uh, freshly grated nutmeg, some garlic, just butter, parsley. And that's it. We're going to just do a braising and serve this with lovely golden roasted potato, which makes for a perfect dinner, especially if it's a bit cold where you are. Anyway, let's start the recipe right now. Now let's start with the ingredients uh, you're going to be needing. Now if you're new to the channel again, this is always mentioned in the video description and I always show uh, that rough uh, look. This is all the ingredients you're going to be using, the milk, the cream, all the other ingredients, the pepper, the bay leaves, uh, the nutmeg, the garlic, butter, parsley and the meat. Uh. But for all the details, please refer to the video description. Okay, so look at this. My mise en place, as we call it, is done. Uh, my uh, meat is ready, it's been uh, strapped around, seasoned, I've wired my milk and my cream. And uh, same for the butter, I've got all the aromatics and now we're ready to go to the stove. Easy. And now for the stove. So this is a bit of a braising technique, meaning that we're going to start on the stove here and we're going to finish to cook the meat in the oven. Anything that is slow cooking in the oven, I always prefer and you will get the best result by using a cast iron pot. Yeah, that's the rule. So I'm always starting with about one or two tablespoons of oil. I'm using grapeseed oil in here with a nudge of butter. And I'm going to bring this to temperature. I'm using a medium heat. You don't need to put a raging heat under there. We're going to gently color our meat. Huh? It's not something that has to be, it's not a steak, yeah? just for braising. So just a bit of color. So we first wait until this melts and then we're going to put the meat in. Now, when your butter foams, what I do, I usually throw a piece of, uh, of black pepper or something in there. If it starts cooking, it's usually hot enough. And so I'm going to try to grab my meat here and boom. See, so you want to have that kind of little sizzling, and, but it's not overly sizzling. No, it's not a raging whoosh like when you put it. It's kind of a gentle noise going on. So it's just a, a slight sizzling. So we, we're going to make sure to have a lightly colored bit of a golden color roast uh, to start with. After three to four minutes, little tongs, love to use those, and we're gonna turn this, you see? So we want a little bit of color, but not too much. Uh, so this is, this is nice. Uh, so you make sure your heat is not too high because sometimes we tend to put the heat always too high, thinking it's not gonna get brown. But it's just a matter of time, even with a medium heat, if you leave your meat like this long enough, it will eventually start to get brown. So it's very important to wait enough time on each side to get that color going. So same thing here, three to four, up to five minutes even. All right, so now all the sides are done. As you can see, I've got this on the final side here and it starts to smell really good. You start to have that kind of roasted pork uh, smell coming up. So what we're gonna do, all of the garlic with the sleeve, you don't have to peel them, in there some time, a few bay leaves, there we go, and we're just going to mix that in the juice here, just to get it a bit fragrant, so just a minute or so, and immediately we're going to start to pour our cream to do a bit of a deglazing, and now for the cream, so the total is one liter, I think about four cups of liquid, and I'm putting 300 ml of heavy whipping cream and the rest is going to be milk. So I'm starting with the, the cream here. As you can see, it stops the cooking. And what you want to do is to actually detach a little bit the juices at the bottom. You see that, that color? 
Uh, the, the, the cream starts to get that nice kind of brownish color. Uh, it's the beginning of the sauce. That's what we want, some nice taste. And you can sprinkle some of these parsley stalks. Uh, that's gonna infuse as well, gently. Now from here, you're gonna have to preheat your oven at 160 degrees Celsius, which is about 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me add now the milk to show you how the, the dish looks like before it goes into the oven. All right, so we're gonna stop the cooking of the cream there with the rest of the milk. Okay. Now depending on the size, the one liter you can see here, I haven't put everything. I think for me it's gonna be enough because my piece of meat is not huge and I just want to have that milk about halfway because we're gonna have to turn the roast uh, throughout the cooking every 30 minutes while it's cooking. So I want to have some of the meat submerged and some of the meat on, on the top like that. Huh? Another final step, just before you put uh, your meat in the oven, you're gonna use uh, some uh, fresh nutmeg, a bit of a grater. And you're gonna get a nice grating of nutmeg over the pork and mix it with the sauce and we're done. So final, final stir, final stir to mix the nutmeg with everything, the stokes. And as you can see, it gives you a lovely little roast. We're gonna cover this with the lid. And now that's gonna go for the oven. The cooking time is about one and a half hour. So about 30 minutes, every 20 minutes or whatever, I'm gonna open the lid, take this out of the oven and turn the meat around. And so I'll show you once on the camera and then you can do the rest for yourself. And when this is finished, We'll see the result together. All right, so the cooking time of the meat can be anywhere between one hour to one hour and a half, depending on how big your, uh, your roast is. But every 20 or 30 minutes, uh, you take your pan of the, uh, out of the oven. As you can see, you get a nice color now. And we're just gonna turn this like that. And that's gonna make sure everything cook nicely and doesn't dry up. So quite often, you turn it all the way until it's cooked. Now to know when it's cooked, you can use one of those uh, electronic thermometer, you're gonna plant it in and you have to have a reading at about 65 to 70 uh, degrees Celsius. 70 degrees Celsius is really kind of a well done. 65 will be more on the, not pinkish, but kind of, you know, uh, kind of medium. But on the safe side, 70 is usually the norm if you really want to have something well cooked. All right, so when your meat is ready, huh, we're gonna reserve it and you will see that the sauce that you have with the milk and everything, there's some kind of curdle on here, which is normal. So don't panic. And what we're gonna do is reserve the meat. So I'm gonna a tray in the back. I'm gonna put a bit of that sauce just at the bottom so that it doesn't really get dry. And then get my meat out and put it behind me there in the tray. So you're trying to grab your meat and basically Put it on there and we're gonna cover it with a foil and keep it on the side while we're finishing the sauce. Now that my meat is out, uh, there's the question of the sauce. Now what are we gonna do with this, right? Uh, it's a bit messy. So we have to make what is called a bread sauce. The first thing we need to do is to fish out all of the garnish, all of the garlics, and pass this through a sieve. So we're gonna, we're gonna press the garlic. What we want is the garlic really, and we're gonna press the flesh of the garlic into the sauce, that's the first step. So you first fish everything out, put everything in a little sieve like that, and then we'll see the next step after that. Next, you're gonna remove all the little branches that sits in there to leave only the garlic. And with a spoon, thinking in a heavy spoon, you're just gonna press down like that to extract the juices from the garlic and make sure they're sieved through and they fall into your preparation below. Finally, when you've done this, the last step consists of putting 50 grams, I put the equivalent in ounces, uh, 40 or 50 grams of this, the white of bread. Huh? This is bread, just the white part of the bread and the soft part. It has to be fresh bread as well and don't take a stale bread. And we're gonna mix this into the sauce and all what you need to do here, is gonna have to leave this to soak a little bit for a few minutes and then we're gonna blitz this and uh, with a, like a, a stick blender and that's gonna make the whole mix coherent. Huh? And that's gonna bind the sauce. And bread is an old fashioned way of actually binding a sauce and make it a little bit thicker. To finish, take a stick uh, blender like this. A gentle speed. 
and you're gonna go through like a soup I'm mixing everything together now obviously after you've done that uh, it's foamy and uh, there might be a piece of bread that survived here on the sides uh, you can discard it or you can blitz again uh, but what we're gonna do we're gonna take a saucepan and we're gonna filter that sauce again through a sieve to have a nice clean sauce that we can finish off we're gonna correct the seasoning and it's gonna be ready to be used with the meat my sauce has now been uh, filtered and as you can see uh, it looks much more like a nice clean sauce a bit of an ivory color uh, and this is the bread sauce so of course what you're gonna you're gonna taste mm. it's really infused so it really tastes like pork Ooh, nice and the garlic uh salt wise like so a tiny bit i think you know up to you and we could add a little bit uh, of black pepper but i'm not too much a fan i think i'm gonna leave it like this it's really up to you so when it's here basically you can warm it up a little bit you don't want to make it uh, boil and it's ready to serve all right so just before serving uh, we need to slice this but i just want to have a look so you of course you remove some of the string but i just want to see see because it's very juicy and the uh, advantage with this method of cooking that a lot of time you get something that's a bit more, you know, there's more juiciness to it and it's less dry. So as you can see, you get a nice color, it's nice and soft, and it's still some juices inside and has been infused with the milk and everything. So once like that, you just slice it up and we're gonna put it on a dish. Okay, so here we are. I've uh, put my uh, roast on a serving plate and these are the roasted potatoes uh, I talked to you about. So when you serve this dish, the bread sauce, um, which is infused with the pork, comes here on the side. And, and really, what you need to do, and this is the whole show, is to really rehydrate all of your pork with that lovely little sauce that you've got here, right? Okay, so I'm just going to have a little bite. Uh, and uh, already what I can see, it is really tender. It's, it looked dry, but it's actually not dry at all. And I'm gonna dip this in the sauce here, and have a taste. Well, now this is milk on milk. So the, the meat here has got that infusion. You can kind of feel the garlicky milk, but that sauce, honestly, I'm really surprised, gladly surprised. It is really special and really tasty. And what, oh, what about these? Roasted golden potatoes with milk sauce. That goes beautifully. And to finish, well, I think it really works, guys. I think it makes a real tender kind of roast. And it's really something I've never tried. It's a bit of an old-fashioned recipe. Highly recommended. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. What a recipe to start. I'm really actually super surprised by that bread sauce with the garlic infused. It makes the meat, especially pork that can be a bit dry, really nice and tender and juicy. An absolute must try. I haven't shown you the recipe of the roasted potatoes that are also beautiful. It will be for another recipe. But anyway, next week we're discovering another easy recipe, something I had in a restaurant, which was mussel with a chorizo cream and garlic sauce that was absolutely divine we're gonna try to remake that so don't forget to join me next week for the next video now in the meantime if you want to uh, chat to me ask me a question use of course the comment section instagram hashtag french cook academy you also have facebook you can also become a patron on my patreon page and if you want to register your interest for the school uh, all the details will be listed in the video description that's all for the information i hope you enjoyed the video and i see you all again for another great french recipe next thursday take care all bye bye